Hello, boys and girls. Brad the Guitologist here. I think most of us can relate to the experience of being a kid and singing into a paper towel tube or a Pringles potato chip can and remarking how cool the effect was on our voice. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a lo-fi special effect microphone from a Pringles can and a common part from a trashed microwave oven. Trash microwave ovens seem to be a common thing where I live, but if you can't find a discarded microwave, many small children's toys and old smoke alarms will also have what you need. Uh, what you're looking for is a piezoelectric button typically found in the buzzers of household appliances, or in the case of toys, it'll be used as the speaker. Uh, these can come inside different shaped plastic housings, but will typically look something like this when you find them inside familiar objects. What you want to do is break open the plastic housing and inside you'll find the actual element which looks like this. Or if you're too lazy to look for one in the trash, you can buy these readily online at retailers such as Amazon or eBay. You can also find them marketed for use as instrument pickups that come pre-wired with a quarter inch jack which might be a convenient way to go if you don't know how to solder. It's important to note that if you do get your piezoelectric element out of a microwave oven that you uh, just be careful in there. Um, don't touch anything like the large can capacitor. You want to make sure that that's discharged. An old microwave can hold a charge in the capacitor for a long time. So if you don't know what you're doing inside of this old equipment, I just suggest you buy uh, one of these little buttons instead of trying to rip it from something old or just go to like the children's toy route. Uh, or the old smoke alarm route, then you don't have to worry about the voltages being stored in a capacitor. In my case, I decided to attach my quarter inch jack to the potato chip can using some zip ties. I suppose I could have also drilled some holes in the side of the can and mounted the jack, uh, running the wire inside through another hole, but that's way too much work. This will get the job done. Uh, one other thing you'll need if you don't buy a piezo button with a ready-made adhesive is a piece of double-sided tape to attach the element to the metal bottom of the can or a dab of super glue would probably also work fine after everything is attached and wired up here's what the mic looks like and here's what it sounds like the flowers are wilted the preacher's gone and i'm here jilted on the church house lawn through the old graveyard I'm gonna walk around and bury my heart where it won't be found do 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 six foot under ba do 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 six foot under ba do 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 six foot under down in the cold cold ground Okay, now let's try that again, but this time we'll add a little bit of reverb and echo and pro post-processing to get that old-timey slapback sound. The flowers are wilted, the preacher's gone, and I'm here jilted on the church house lawn through the old graveyard. I'm gonna walk around and bury my heart. Where it won't be found, do do do. Six foot under, ba do do do. Six foot under, ba do do do. Six foot under, down in the cold, cold ground. So you can see how cool this thing could be in a studio setting. You know, I mean, it's a special effect microphone. It's not like you're going to use this on every single vocal track you'll do. And yes, most modern audio editing apps will have some ways to create a similar effect with digital processing. But what fun is that? I mean, a digital effect won't make you feel like a kid again, but this might. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys got something out of it and enjoyed it. And if you have, hit subscribe. And for now, we'll see y'all later.